Hello, it's Friday, July 30th, 2010, and happy System Administrator Day. Welcome to This Week in Linux. For the last 11 years, the last Friday of July has been System Administrator Appreciation Day. That's a day where basically you go out of your way to make sure that your system administrator feels appreciated. Otherwise, he might just take down your entire network. So be nice to your system administrators. Moving right along, we got some distro releases this week. Jolly Cloud 1.0, not officially released. It's actually been out for a little while now, but only to a select few. But I happened to get a copy of it myself, and I'm going to be doing a review of it as soon as possible. I had some stuff go on with my desktop, and I had to fix it. Long story. In other news, Linux Mint 9's KDE release and their Fluxbox release candidate came out. I've actually got the Fluxbox release candidate. I'm going to be taking a look at it and doing a review of it probably next week. I like it pretty well so far. Moving on to browser news, Firefox 4 Beta 2 released, and just as I mentioned last week, it has app tabs, that's pretty cool. I took a look at it on my desktop, and yep, there are app tabs. I don't know if I'm 100% impressed with them so far, but yeah, it's better than nothing. As far as the theme that allows you to put the tabs on top, still not available for Linux, so when are we going to get some Linux love, Mozilla guys? Okay, let's talk a little bit about GNOME 3. A lot of people have heard about GNOME 3 and don't like the idea of GNOME Shell completely replacing GNOME Panel. Well, your fears are allayed for the time being. It's actually been pushed back another six months till March 2011, at the very least. If you'll remember, it was actually supposed to release in March of 2010, then pushed back to September, and now March, and who knows when or if it will ever actually come out. But at Guadec, they announced it's going back, of course, six months, and they showed some new screenshots. I will be showing that one right now, of course. It looks pretty cool. It looks like they've sort of combined the ideas of Ubuntu's Unity with the existing GNOME shell, and they're making a really interesting interface out of it. So I'm going to try to get a copy of that and try it out sometime soon. All right, let's talk about some hardware news. Amazon has downsized their Kindle, made it smaller, and kept it at a pretty decent price. This is the third generation of the Kindle device. It is 50% better as far as contrast. It's 21% smaller, 15% lighter, and it has a battery life of up to a month. It also comes in a graphite gray color, so those people that didn't like the white one, they've now got an option. Personally, I would rather see a color screen as opposed to a color device, but I'm sure that since this is mainly designed for books, color screen's not in the works. Moving on to some other hardware news, with all this Dell Ubuntu hate stuff in the news lately, Dell has actually come out to say, we really don't hate Ubuntu, we're actually releasing a new Ubuntu desktop. I took a look at it earlier, the hardware specs are pretty decent, the price is pretty respectable, it's not a whole new line of Ubuntu desktops or anything, but it is a step in the right direction. Moving on to some tablet stuff, Kmart is going to get a $150 Android tablet. Wait a minute, Kmart's still in business? Yes, the Augen Gen Touch 78. It's an Android 2.1 device with an 800 megahertz processor, 256 megs of RAM, 2 gigabytes of flash storage, up to 16 gigabytes of SD storage, Wi-Fi, USB connectivity, and supposedly it will play back 720p video. That said, I saw a review of the device from the Android blog here on YouTube. I'll have a link to that in the show notes. Doesn't make the device look very good so far. But I'm going to run out to Kmart in a little while and see if I can find one of them. And let's finish up with some Samsung slash Android type news. Android 2.2 for the Samsung Galaxy S class devices has been leaked. It's still a very early release of it, and the release notes say that it's far from ready from production, good, stable, but not the fastest one, and it's also said to cripple internet access, it doesn't support the camera flash, and there are some other hiccups that it causes. So basically, if you really want that 2.2 on your new Samsung Galaxy device, you can get it if you're willing to cripple the device. But speaking of things getting out, Samsung actually decided to go ahead and open source the Samsung Captivate source code. Will this help Samsung speed up the release of new Android releases? Possibly. Will there be a lot more new ROMs that are more compatible? Most definitely. Anyway, that's all for this week in Linux news. Sorry this was kind of rushed. I've got a couple of things I've got to run and do, so I had to do this quickly. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.